In our last video, we talked about some common American steels and the numbering system that describes carbon, alloy, and tool steels. It raised a lot of questions though. I got questions about steels that we did not mention, as well as other numbering systems we didn't mention. In this brief and non-exhaustive video, we'll take a look at a few more of the common numbering systems. Last time we talked about the AISI and SAE numbering system. This was developed by the American Iron and Steel Institute and the Society for Automotive Engineers beginning back in the 1930s and 40s. The goal was to develop a unified numbering system for commonly available steels in the United States. In the 1990s, the system was turned over to the Society for Automotive Engineers. So you will see that designation SAE in front of the um, steel number, whether that be um, 1095 or 5160 or whatever. But you will still see AISI with some of those um, designations as well. There was another classification of steel that, that was under this system, and that was for stainless steels that we did not mention in our last video. Another common um, specifier of steels is the American Society for Testing Materials, or AT ASTM International. Their specifications specify both the, the form or shape, whether it be bar or plate or tubular or wire, as well as certain mechanical properties rather than chemical composition. In other words, if you look at the ASTM specification number, it will not specifically tell you anything about that steel in the way that the SAE system does. Here are some examples. ASTM A36 is probably one of the most widely known steels among blacksmiths and welders and fabricators. And this is is a specification for structural steel. A131 is a specification for structural steel used in shipbuilding. And there are dozens and dozens of other uh, ASTM steels specified for various um, properties and various uses. They do not uh, directly correspond to the SAE system. There's some overlap. Some steels have a specification, meet specifications for both systems, which adds to the confusion. What about outside the United States? There are several systems used in other countries. The EN numbering system is common in Europe and the UK. The JIS system from Japan and the Swedish system in Sweden. You'll find crossover charts commonly on the internet where you can compare these systems with the SAE system. Now we get into a really confusing section, and that is trade names. These are the names by which companies sell steel. For our example, we're going to look at Crucible Industries. That's an American steel manufacturer. They make a variety of um, SAE steels as well as some of their own proprietary recipes and they sell them with different trade names. First one we'll look at is Aircool. Aircool is Crucible's version of A2 air hardening tool steel. CPM3V, um, the CPM powdered metallurgy process is one that was developed by Crucible Industries and they use it to produce a variety of common tool steels as well as their own proprietary recipes, such as this 3V. S30V is another example of a proprietary steel that Crucible makes, but is not on any other numbering system. MagnaCut is another one that's getting a lot of hype in the knife world today. Um, and then other steel manufacturers besides Crucible, they will have their own trade names for both common steels and their own proprietary recipes. Yes, the steel numbering system, systems are very confusing. There's not a consistent crossover, and there is no one single system that covers them all. But I hope this helped you with defining some of the terminology that you commonly encounter. 